Welcome to a new vlog. Today we're taking a look at a device which is not typical found in a hobbyist lab but one that certainly has its place with the more advanced user that has some automated test setup needs. This is the Magic DAC and it was sent in for free for the purpose of this review. I believe it was shipped from New Zealand so I think uh, it could be made in New Zealand. Here is the spec list for this unit. We have 8 analog inputs 14 bits, 48 kilo samples per second with plus or minus 10 volt. Typical voltage resolution is 10 millivolts. Uh, these can be connected uh, single-ended or differential if you use two of the channels for one input. Then we have eight digital inputs or outputs. These are rated for zero to five volts. We have two analog outputs capable of voltage, sine or PWM output of zero up to five volts. These are uh, driven by a 12-bit DAC resolution with up to 31 kHz of output uh, frequency. One counter up to 5 MHz input with edge detection uh, or PWM output up to 65 kHz, 0 to 3.3 volt rated. There is a one 5 volt uh, output rail limited to 250 mA powered from the uh, VBUS rail. The whole thing is, is uh, USB uh, powered and it comes with a uh, DIN rail mount. And another important feature of this device is the way you control this uh, whole setup, which is through a Python API and everyone loves Python these days. However, there is one important limitation here. It is only supported under Windows because of hardware driver constraints, which prevent it from working under Linux and Mac. Inside the box I got the unit, uh, the included DIN rail adapter and the USB cable and this is good practice to include the USB cable because users might have a low quality USB cable laying around and they might decide to use that and um, it can cause all sorts of trouble and head scratching as to why the product is not working as expected. By including a good quality cable in the box you just limit the number of things that might go wrong for the user. And before I continue with this presentation of the product, let me mention the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. They are the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Vollog channel. And if you have any ongoing projects, I highly recommend you give them a try as their service is really good. If we take a closer look at the unit, we have the inputs on the left side and the outputs on the right side. And that's how it should be. I quite like this enclosure. It's nice and compact. Uh, we have these uh, pluggable wire terminals which seem to be of good quality. There is a uh, small tactile switch on the side of the board. Uh, not sure this is not marked in any way and I don't remember seeing this mentioned in the user manual either. Uh, but otherwise this is a pretty small and compact unit. If you check out their website they, they also offer a mechanical drawing as PDF and a 3D step model which is a great addition. I often find myself searching for these things which are buried deep inside manufacturer websites or not available at all. So thumbs up for that. There is also an additional automation and measurement uh, board add-on uh, which can connect to the Magic DAC. They offer that on their website and by using that kind of board you gain additional functionality which uh, helps you build automated test jigs. So how can you make use of this gadget, you might ask? Well, imagine this scenario. You're building some kind of product and you're probably building hundreds, maybe even thousands of units. You probably don't want to waste days worth of work manually checking that each one of your boards is working correctly and you don't want to ship them without being tested either. This is where the magic DAC can be really useful. You can build a custom test jig or depending on the situation, you might even skip the jig and just have DuPont wires or something like that that plug directly uh, into your PCB. Then you can just write a Python script that would output the required signal from the Magic DAC to your board and it will also take the input and then you could also measure and data log uh, anything your board might output, thus automating the test procedure. To showcase that kind of functionality, I have prepared a little experiment. So first, this is the device under test. It's an ESP32 development board that will simply wait for an input on a certain GPIO. And when it receives that trigger, it will toggle high a different GPIO. And uh, these two will be connected to the digital side of the Magic DAC. On the analog side of the Magic DAC, I will be connecting the 3.3 volt rail from my development board, so we're also measuring that. 
Now you can imagine expanding this kind of setup for multiple GPIOs and testing for functionality like ADC or PWM and at the end of this test you could be validating that all of the GPIOs on your board are functional, everything is soldered down correctly and your voltage rails are within the allowed limits. Now on the test program side of things, if you already have Python 3 installed under Windows, it's as simple as running a pip install command to install the magic DAC component and then you can start writing your script based on the available documentation and examples. When you first connect the magic DAC to the computer, it will show up as um, driver unavailable but running the pip install command for the magic DAC component will actually install the driver for you after uh, you confirm. I think the included documentation is pretty great, straightforward and easy to use. So based on that, I've put together this little test program that we're going to run. As explained previously, the test program will send an output trigger. The ESP32 will use that trigger to toggle an output that is read back by the Magic DAC. The Magic DAC will also read the 3.3 volt rail to see if it's within the allowed limits. Now depending on the uh, readings it gets back, it will give me an OK pass or a fail message uh, at the output of the program. And as you can see here, I have passed both of the tests, but if I disconnect uh, one of the GPIOs, for example, it will throw an error when running the test, and similarly disconnecting that 3.3 volt rail will throw an error because the resulting measured value is not within the allowed limits. So, as you can see, it can be pretty easy to get a test setup up and running with this kind of hardware and by using Python, I think this will appeal to many people. And I know some of you are curious to see what's inside this gadget, so let's do a quick teardown. I don't expect to see too much horsepower inside this unit because judging from the specs, I'm thinking it could be achieved with a microcontroller and maybe an external 14-bit ADC just because not that many MCUs include a 14-bit ADC and if they do they might not be uh, easily available or the ADC might not be as fast as needed. And I think I was right we have an STM32F103 microcontroller in here which I bet must be very hard to source right now unless the manufacturer uh, built some stock ahead of time. On the left we have the uh, analog front end for the inputs. These are probably just some resistive dividers and current limiting resistors which feed into this guy. And this is an ADS7871. Uh, this is an 8-channel 14-bit ADC with built-in programmable gain amplifier and built-in reference. And to the right of the unit we have the open drain outputs driven directly from the MCU GPIO. Uh, simple and clean, it does the job, however I do note the fact that there is minimal protection for both the input and the output, so in case something bad happens like the user applying a higher voltage or some transients to the inputs or outputs, I think some damage might occur. Soldering looks very nice and clean and uh, overall the board construction looks very nice, nothing to complain about. I'm not sure how much extra work it would take to implement such a feature but one thing that I would really find useful is if you could define some digital interfaces using the digital I.O. of the device like register a UART port using two of the digital I.O.s and have control over that with a send and receive buffer from the Python API because then I could also automate uh, the exchange of messages between the magic DAC and the device under test. Or imagine adding protocols like I2C or SPI where you could automate testing of sensors that talk to the magic DAC over those protocols. So to sum it up, I really like how this device is built. Quality is good, it works as expected, but most importantly documentation is great. And I could really see this helping a person with not much electronics background to put together a test setup. Sure, it doesn't come cheap, but like I said, it's not for the average hobbyist. And if you compare this to other commercially available uh, products, I think it's pretty competitive pricing. Certainly something worth paying for if you uh, are searching for this kind of functionality. I would also be interested in hearing your thoughts in the comments below. Are you using some kind of digital acquisition system at home or at work? How much do those systems that you're using cost and do they offer uh, extra functionality? over this device. Please put that in a comment below. That was all for today. Uh, thank you for watching this video and if you enjoyed these videos you have to at least hit that like button. 
or you can help support the channel with as little as $1 per month via Patreon.